wanting a place to hide this weary soul. This bad bone. And I tried with all my might, but I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting a vagabond. And just when I To believe my doubts are burning Like ashes in the wind So, so much to my old friends A burden and bitterness You can't just keep it moving Now you're welcome here From now to
so good. God is so good. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Welcome to the house of the Lord, where the Lord abides in us and through us, around us. He surrounds us with his love, with his joy, with his mercy, his never-ending mercy. There's power in the name of Jesus. As we were saying, he picked me up, he turned me around. That's a testimony that we could all say that he has picked us up out of our own graves. He turned us around. He placed our feet on the solid ground, which is the living word of God, which is the living mercy of God, the blood of Christ that has given us life. Amen. I just want you to follow me in this moment of prayer, in this moment of worship, in this moment of just giving God that fresh fragrance, that fresh incense of praise. I want where you are with your whole heart. If you truly want to feel the presence of God, if you truly want an experience, it doesn't matter. You could come up here to the altar. You could be where you're seated. All that matters is that your heart is inclined to receive what is from heaven above, not from us on stage, not from pastors, not from anybody, but from God himself, from Jesus Christ, your Lord, your Savior. If you have your heart willing, follow me, follow me in this prayer, in this worship. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Begin to tell God, thank you. Begin to tell him in your own words how much you love him, how much you want to worship him and praise him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're so good. You're so good. Hey. 
declare that chains will fall. We declare that fear will bow. We declare right here, right now, you'll change, you change everything from bad to good. Oh, everything from bad to good. the living king don't be afraid don't be afraid come and receive the goodness of the father the goodness of the father come and receive come and receive it for oh, all the ears that are hearing oh believe when i tell you this that your miracle is coming your miracle is coming oh if you believe it if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, oh, come and hear this. Your miracle is coming. Your miracle is coming. Hey, yeah. Oh, for all ears, let them hear, says the word of God. For all ears, let them hear. If you believe and you proclaim that Jesus is your Savior, you will be saved through his grace. You will be saved through his grace. It doesn't matter how dirty you come. It doesn't matter if instead of saying holy ground, you feel like it's dirty ground. Jesus can transform and renew everything. Jesus is the only one that can do this. If you declare this when we sing it one more time, if you declare the holy ground is in me, the holy ground, my ground is fertile for the Lord. My ground is fertile. Jesus, come plant your seed in my life. I believe. I believe if you pray this, if you pray, you will receive that fresh oil from heaven above that only comes from the Father. If you receive it with your open heart, if you receive it right now, we say, chains fall, fear bows here now. Jesus, you change everything. Lives healed, hope found here now. Jesus, you change everything. Show us your glory. Come on, let's keep worshiping Jesus. Hallelujah. Let our hearts be holy ground. Hallelujah. Show us your glory, Jesus. We want more. We want closer. Show us your glory, Lord. We 
Jesus. Your Holy Spirit is honored in this place. We honor you. We honor you. We honor you. You're lifted high. Worthy, worthy you are, Father, of every praise. You're worthy, God. You're worthy. It's about you. Our songs are about you, Lord. It's about lifting you up in glory, Lord, in our lives. Oh, Father, thank you for coming close. Thank you for open heavens. Thank you for mercy and grace. You are holy. You are worthy, God. You are worthy of all. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We're living in a time of grace and mercy and open heaven. How many say amen? Feels good to just come and worship the Father. Listen, the only obstacle that's in your way today is just a word from you, from your heart. To say, Father, forgive me. And the Father's arms are wide open. How many say amen? There's going to be a time where every tongue will confess and every knee will bow. Because we serve a God of authority. We serve a God of justice. But I want you to know that today is a day where we have a free relationship with God. Where that roaring lion is on your side. When we say, hear now. We're not commanding God. Listen, God is a God of authority. What we're saying is that it's that authority that we carry as a church, that we carry as believers, that here and now my heart will be a holy ground, that here and now we will see revival, we will see healing, we will see in our church the Holy Spirit move in an abounding way. How many say glory to God? Hallelujah. Let's give a praise to Jesus this morning. God is good. God is great. God is amazing. Amen. How many of you guys are blessed to be in church today? Amen. And I just want to give you a warm, warm welcome to Fontana First. And is there anybody here coming for the first time? Anybody here coming for the first time? Hallelujah. Praise God. It's good to have you here in the house of God. God bless you, Daniel. It's good to see you, man. We're in a family. Feel at home. Amen. God has a special word for you, I believe, a word of hope. Amen. Uh, anybody else visit us for the first time here? We're all at home. Praise be to God. God is good. Let's give a praise to God. You may take your seats. We have Brother Byron coming and blessing us in the next step of this service. Amen. Bless you, church. You guys look amazing. Amen. I've been given the, uh, the opportunity to... Uh, for our, our tithes and offerings, but how many of us know that our church is a church that is pretty much open pretty much every single day, right, Pastor? Every single day there's things happening here. Um, and I have a few announcements before that. And um, this past Thursday, we had our marriage hour. For those of you that haven't been able to come, I invite you. We've been having uh, great classes, amen? So that happens every once, every third Thursday, once a month, amen. But with that also, this Tuesday, where's, where's my, my women at this morning? My women of God, amen? Women of prayer. This Tuesday, uh, the 25th, they will be having their Bible study at 6 p.m. And you may say, you know what, I, uh, when does that happen? That's once a month as well, usually the fourth t Tuesday, and it's at 6 p.m. If, if you need a... Uh, more information, please see Maria at the end of the service. Maria, if you can lift your hands. There it is. Right next to my brother David right there. That's uh, this Tuesday at 6 p.m. Also, who has been able to come on Wednesdays for our life groups? Amen. God is doing great things in, in our church, and our city. Um, but without you, we cannot do it. Amen. So this Wednesday at 7 p.m., our life groups happen. We meet in the small, what, what do we call it, conference room? We meet in the conference room at 7 p.m. We kind of have a huddle first. You know, we pray. We get the blessing from, from God. And then we go. And let me tell you, um, it's, it's awesome what God is doing in our lives. Amen? Also, where's my man of God this morning? 
Where's my man of God? Amen, amen. Um, Thursday is our, our meeting this, this Thursday. Uh, we're in the book, we're reading the book of Courageous, amen? It's a series. So please come. I invite you. You may say, I know we, we we're tired, um, things happen, but remember, when we come together as one, God takes that tiredness away, right? And iron sharpens iron, amen? So Thursday, man, at 6 p.m., women at Tuesday at 6 p.m. as well. And I believe before I go into the Word, before I go into everything else, I believe Carrie has a testimony, and I want to invite you up. Come on, why don't we give her a big hand? Good morning. So I, Pastor asked me to give a testimony this morning, and my first thought was no. I, I'm embarrassed. I don't want to. But I realized as soon as I went back to my seat, it's about something bigger than me. It's about giving glory to God. And it's, it's not about me and my comfort. But over the last couple of weeks, I've gone through a lot. And throughout the whole process, God has been by my side. He's been my comforter. He's been my healer. He's been my rock. He's been everything that I've needed. So long story short, I was supposed to have surgery this last week. I went in for my routine procedures and everything. EKG came back and they said, you can't have the surgery. They wouldn't give me much information. And... I did my research, I found out what I needed to find out, and my EKG said I was in severe heart failure. So I spent, I was scared, but I relied on God, I relied on my faith, I relied on my family, and I received news on Friday that I am fine. I am fine, my heart is fine, I am fine. So praise God. Why don't we give it to Christ one more time? Come on. There's no way. Man can say something else, but God has the ultimate word. Amen. We've seen it time and time again. We've seen it with our pastor's miracle. We see it in Carrie's life, and we see it in your life, even though you may not want to share, but you know what God has done in your life. Amen. And this is holy ground. It's a perfect song that we were singing not too long ago because it kind of goes with my, with my the scripture. And if I ask the the ushers to be ready. And if you have your Bibles, if you can put it up there if you can, it's in Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. And when you have it, say, I got it. Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. You got it? And it says like this. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there will be enough food in my temple. And if you do, says the Lord of heaven's armies, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it and put me to test. You see an apple here, right? That when you and I come into God's house, we have, we have to identify that what you have is because God has blessed you with it. An apple has been created, and we can eat the, the peel, we can eat the inside of the apple, but 10% of that apple you are not allowed to eat, right? The core and the seed. That seed the, the seed has been designed for you to put in the ground so it can flourish and make a blessing in your life. Can you imagine what God can do if you and I understand on how to plant a seed in God's ministry? I love illustrations. I speak with illustrations. I speak with my, with my hands. And this spoke to my life. I, I don't know how to plant stuff. You know, I have friends that I, that I, I see that they do stuff and I tell them, you know, once it's all grown, I'm going to come and, uh, and, and do my groceries with you. But imagine... You can eat the peel, 
You can eat everything else, but 10% of this apple you cannot touch. But if you take that seed and you put it in, in, in fertile soil, in holy ground, the blessings that God can do. Yes, God does not need our money. God does not need anything. But with that blessing, we're blessing someone else. It's powerful. You're in holy ground. And I'm going to ask you, please, to stand up with me as we pray for these offerings. That, that seed that you may plant this morning may flourish, not only in your life, but for those that we don't know. Our church is a giving church. We provide for our community in many different ways. And why don't you, if you have your offering, if you can give it through the app, if you have your offering in, in your envelope, why don't you raise it up and let's give it to Christ. Amen. Father, we come before you this morning, Jesus. Thanking you, Father God, for everything you do. That, Father God, if we understand the simple message, Father God, this morning on how to plant this seed and the blessings that come from there, Father God, we will see great things in your name. I ask Jesus, Father God, to bless those who can give, and even those that cannot, Father God, for many reasons. And in your name we pray. And we all say, Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be see. Thank you. Thank you very much. The name of the Lord is good. Children are ready for children's church. You can go right now. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm excited when I come to the house of the Lord because the Lord all, all the time give us some refreshment, or excitements, and surprises, wonderful surprises. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad to be at the house of the Lord. I, I know that you, you may came to church kind of heavy burden uh, with some stuff. And I was, someone shared with me some situations that they have. Tell your brother or your sister, that's normal. <laughs> that, that, that's part of life. But what the Lord wants us is to endure. He wants us to Hold on holy ground and, and, and on, on this place, on the rock of Jesus, stay strong. Can you say amen? Let's go to the Word of God today. Luke chapter 24, verse 28. The message today is make a difference. Remember the vision of the church is preach the gospel to win people for Jesus Christ, form disciples, to send them to preach, to transform the city, the nation, and the world with the message of the gospel, and that is revival. At the beginning of the year, the Lord showed me a key, and right now many things are getting uh, more illustrated, no, of what's going on on our life. He showed me a key, a plain key. On Monday, 5 o'clock in the morning, 5.30, they came to the church and robbed us, robbed us some, someone pick up some stuff from the church, and and escape. We need to change keys. And that's okay. That's okay. That, that's, that's normal things. The, the keys have not been changed since 15 years, something like that. So it's time to make an upgrade and things are going to be changed and it's going to be more secure on, the, on church too. So, so pray for us. Pray for us. Amen. By the time we had also another attacks, another kind of things that happened in the church, and the bathrooms have clawed, and I said, "What's going on?" 
So I started to make some numbers, and, and I said, okay, so um, what is the problem with so much, uh, well, it goes to the shore, no? Uh, so I count on, on Sunday, we have 300 on, on the Spanish, and we had with the English and the Ethiopians another 100, uh, so there are 400 people on Sunday, Monday we have 50, 20 people, Tuesday with the prayer meeting on the morning and the uh, events on the afternoon, we got another 50 people going on on the, on the, on the property, Wednesday we had 140, 150, uh, th th Thursday we got another 30 to 50 people because we had also the 12 steps on Spanish and, uh, and on, on, on. We have over 700, 800 people going through the church each, each week. Say with me, praise the Lord. And, and, and I don't know about you, but in Spanish, we don't have any more parking lot uh, on, on, on certain service. So we have problems. Another kind of problems. And that's good. The Lord's going to help us. Can you say amen? Um. If we are praying, something great is happening. Tell your brother, you, we need to continue prayer. And with God, you never lose, you always win. Let's go to the Word of God, Luke chapter 24, verse 28 till 32. As they approached to the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he was going farther. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were open, and they recognized him. And he disappeared from their sight. Verse 32. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? Close your eyes. Raise one of your hands. I say, Lord, thank you for the word of God. Because our eyes will be open. Our hearts will be open to receive the impartation that comes from about. Lord, thank you because you are doing something great in my life, in my family, in my church. We worship you, Lord. And we, right now, we bound every attack from the enemy. We rebuke it in the powerful name of Jesus. And we declare right now this Heavens are open. The skies are open. Lord, and our hearts are open to receive everything that comes from Jesus Christ, from the throne of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray it. Amen. Amen. Let's praise the Lord right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I'd like to continue about um, what happened on, on, on Resurrection Time, Eastern. And we are on that season where where we, we see Jesus that he has rise. Can you say amen? The story takes place after the resurrection of Jesus. There's a commotion on, on the disciples because they start to say, Jesus has risen. People were excited. And Jesus had manifested himself to the woman. We know already that. To Peter, to some of the disciples. And remember one thing, the tomb was empty, and it's still empty. Praise God for that. Sometimes we find hard to believe. It's difficult for us to understand. When they already, Jesus told us. What the Bible, when we open, tells us. And, and sometimes it's hard to us to assimilate that word and, and digest the word of God. For some of you, then you are struggling with different situations. That's normal. It's in the Bible. Jesus himself suffered. That's part of life. But in that process, the Lord is working on each one of us. Can you say amen? And Jesus right now appears to two men on the road of Emmaus. And they start to talk with them. 
start to eat with them. And he disappeared from their eyes. And they start to discuss each other. Say, verse 32, they ask each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scripture to us? Every time that you come to an encounter with the Lord Jesus, to the word, your heart needs to start boiling. Your heart needs to be doing something inside of you. Did not burn on, in our hearts. That tells me something. That tells me that there's still some spiritual sensibility. When we praise the name of the Lord and we say, show us your glory and, and we cry to the Lord. You are showing the Lord that you still have sensibility. That you still alive, that you still are able to Feel something from the Lord. And that showed me not only the sensibility, but they still had fear of God. They had the ability to have tears from their eyes. And that's wonderful. But what the scripture tells me, and I encourage you to, to read all the, all the chapter. They were going on the opposite direction. Emmaus was the opposite direction to Jerusalem. They were leaving the temple. They were leaving the cross. They were leaving, they're moving away from the sacred. <clears throat> and all the time that the Bible tells me about Jerusalem, you're going up, but when you're going to Egypt, you're going down. When you're going to Palestine, when you're going to another place, you're going down. But when you, when you approach to Jerusalem, you're going up. When you approach to the presence of the Lord, you're going up. And they were going away from the sacrifices. They were going away from the offerings. They knew God. Moreover, they, they were disciples of the Lord. But they were their walk, slow, steady, they were, they distanced themselves from the things of God. This is how I see many people today at church. They have a conscience. They, they, they know, they have known. They, they know how to fellowship with God. They had experienced already miracles many times. They know the word salvation but in their walk, little by little, we're getting away from the sacred, from, from the presence. And it's not that we lost already our sensibility, but that our slow moving away from the Lord, putting some other priorities, stop congregating, stop fellowship. They're going little by little to their own ways. To the old bitter words. They have, they start to hang up again with the wrong people. And that slowly will cool your heart. Emmaus. It was a village and was down. Jerusalem was about. The path of Emmaus is the similarity of going the path of the sinners, getting away from the sacred, versus the, the path of the victors, the, the, the one they have the victory. The path of Wins versus the path of obedience. The path of sin versus the path of holiness. And I see the amazing figure of Jesus Christ approaching to them. And start to talk with them. 
start to fellowship with him. You know, that was amazing because Jesus approached to thief. He approached to drunk people. He sit and eat with them. That's what the Bible says. He didn't get contaminated with them. He didn't, he didn't do those things, but he came, approached. He, he approached to the prostitute. He, 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 didn't, he touched the leper. He gave another opportunity to them. That's so one. The mercy of God of two guys that are going away on this message. Slowly, steady, but away from God. And Jesus walks with them just so they will know that they're, they're turning away. And I, I got three, four points right here Then I will go kind of fast. But what can make me change? There, there, some people say, Pastor, pray for my son because he, he needs to be changed. Okay, do something for him. Well, I could pray, but there's a process to for the change. It happened to me. I was a rebellious guy. I, I, I rebellious against to be on the, on the will of God. I never want to be a pastor. I never want to be uh, a, 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 an evangelist or anything like that. I said, I already know what my father went through. I don't want that for my life. And, 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 and the Lord knows how to tell you on that path and you are going away Say, hey, how you doing, brother? And he started a conversation. He, 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 he had a conversation with me. And he knows how to make my heart in fire again. And I need to turn away from that old path and start to walk again in the path that the Lord wants me to do. But what what what? What can make me change? And the first thing that it will change someone, if you want someone to be changed, is the word of God. Jesus came and he started to share the scriptures. And the word of God, which is alive and has power, that word will make me remember who is God and also remember who am I. Luke chapter 24, verse 27. And they begin with Moses, and he be, and, and beginning with Moses and all the prophets, Jesus explained to them what was saying in all the scriptures concerning him. The success of the church of revival is the word of God. Because the Holy Spirit will come here, will make you feel, you will fall on the floor, you will start to live, you will, you will see the angels, you will see visions, but you, we need to have the foundation that is the Word of God. Acts chapter 2, verse 42 says, And they devoted themselves to the apostle teachings and to the fellowship and to the breaking of the, pray, the bread and to pray. Study the Word of God. Tell your brother, study the Word of God. A approach to those words that it will bring you life. But Pastor, I, I open the Bible and I don't understand anything. Right. We need the Holy Spirit to understand that. Because it's a spiritual words for, for me. They're not information. You don't receive information. What you receive is impartation. And that's what it makes the change. And Jesus when he's talking to them he's, he's bringing that river from the from about and make that flow on them and say, how this guy who know all these things and he was the world. He knows everything. And sometimes the Lord will approach to you on that path, on your path, on this week. With a word, with a song maybe, with a scripture. I encourage you to make a devotional each day. Then, then the word of God will come out to you and make you remember who are you and who is God. Study the word of God. It's Wednesdays, we have the discipleship, the life groups. 
so important that we get together with the young people, with the, with the older folks. Uh, they start to grow, to grow together in the Word of God. And it's so amazed what one hour of the week could do on your life. You spend hours watching the, the fight, how, who's going to win. You even beat with your wife, who's going to win that day. How many of you watched the fight yesterday? Okay, I see. I see some hands over there. I didn't pay. <laughs> I watched the results a hour later. And sometimes we spend more, more time on the TV than on the Word of God. And we want the results from heaven, but we, we have a touch Netflix on our finger. Let's hold back again the Word of God. Let's hold back again the communion, Lord's Supper, and the prayer. There's prayer right here going on on Tuesday, 9 o'clock on the small chapel in Spanish. But right here also in English, every Saturday, 7 o'clock. It's wonderful. And let's eat the Word. Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 16 says... When your words came, I ate them. They were my joy and my heart's delight. For I bear your name, O Lord God Almighty. We need to choose. We need to digest the word of God. Write the, the, the verses that the pastor are, 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 are giving you on Sunday and, and start to read on your home. Say, why the pastor said this? Uh, why was the approach? Uh, what was the concept? I, I need to get more on the Word of God because I may be wrong on something. I remember once I was preaching a long time ago. On a youth service. And I was preaching. And, and you know what? I'm excited. And I was like, amen, say amen. And people were saying amen, hallelujah. All of a sudden, the congregation got quiet. Because I, I got one scripture that is in, in my translation said that they were prophesying. And I used the new translation. They used to have the old King James, the old Reina Valera. But on the Reina Valera, didn't say that. They say the opposite. So I was preaching one thing and their Bibles were saying something else. That's an error on translation. And Pastor, which are the good Bible? Okay, do you want a good Bible? Learn Hebrew. <laughs> Learn Greek. But if you want a good translation, start to search for the... Right now, most, most of the Bibles are correct and, and more accurate on, 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 on the little things. Not on, on the big concept, but on the little things, all little translations. And ask the Lord, help me to understand. The word of God is powerful. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. For the word of God is living and active. Sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing souls and spirit. Joins and narrows. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. Ooh. It's a, it's a surgic, surgical knife, sword that will penetrate. It will come to you. That's what I said to my wife when I was sick of leukemia. I said, Raquel, I need the word of God. Get into my narrow, bone narrow. I need it right there. No information, but the living word of God. And I tell you, the word of God is powerful. Especially when the, in the Word of God you mention the powerful name of Jesus Christ. The source of the Bible is Jesus. So first thing, 
Read the Bible. The Word of God. Do you want any change? Read the Bible. Spend time with the Bible. Second point, personal experience with Jesus Christ. I could tell you about him. I could tell you how it tastes, the Ukrainian food. I could explain to you. I could tell you some details. I could show you some pictures. But at least you had an experience with that. You taste it by yourself. You go to a place that, where they will cook those barenikis. You don't know what is that. I do. You don't have that experience. I do. He will say, Pastor, you should try this food. Okay, you can tell me about it, but I, I need to have an experience. The same thing is with Jesus. Tell your brother and your sister, we need to have an experience with him. We need to have an approach with him. We need to listen the word of God about Jesus because Jesus is real. You, we, you have to get closer. You have to believe on the name of Jesus. We have to consecrate ourselves to the name of Jesus. Can you say amen? Give it a, a, a clap to the Lord right now. A praise to the Lord. Because Jesus loves you. I need some water. Jesus loves you. Tell your brother, Jesus loves you. And he has a great and big plans. He has plans for you and I. Can you say amen? What can make you change? The world of God. Yes. That's Jesus. The personal experience with Jesus Christ, second point. Third point, the decision to change my course. Are you struggling with pornography? Are you struggling with drugs? Are you struggling with, with thoughts? Are you struggling? Uh, and, and you say, well, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm come to church already 20 years. But um, you know what, Pastor? I feel I'm going on the wrong direction. Because if the Lord comes today to pick... The church, in a twinkling on an eye, I don't know if I'm going to make it to, church, to heaven. My personal decision to turn, change my course, it will not, it's not about him or Jesus. It's my decision. I decide to move away or to get closer to God. I decide to congregate or not. I decide to forgive or not. It's my decision. I decide to love or despite not being reprocite. And God is waiting on our decision. What can make you change? First, the word of God. It will start to burn inside of you. Second, the relationship of the Lord Jesus. Third, the decision to change our course is my decision. Fourth, the willingness of paying the price. Sometimes this path is, is, is not a bed of roses. And Jesus says in the word of God, take your cross and follow me. And in that process, God will work on your life with your character, with your pride. And there will be many things that it needs to be changed. Just put your hand on your heart. Say, heart, there are many things that need to be changed. You know that. Don't, don't, don't try to fool yourself. Don't try to be holy and you say you're a saint. No, no, no. There's a lot of things that needs to be changed. Be sincere with yourself. And this process is often painful. When you deal with your pride. What can make you change? The word of God. First. Second, the personal experience with Jesus Christ. Third, the decision to change. Fourth, the willingness to pay the price. Fifth. The perseverance of faith. The word of God says that we need to 
persevere. And those who persevere, those who are stay on the holy ground, those who are asking the glory of the Lord come to our lives, those who will be till the end, till the last drop of sweat, saying, Lord, I'm here. I'm not going back. Those will be saved. That's on Mark chapter 13, verse 13. We don't have time for that right now. And one of the things that the Lord was dealing with me on this week is that, Daniel, I don't want you to be better. better. Most of the time we, 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 we think that church is to make people better. It's not. Is to make people perfect. It's much more than, than better. And the only one who's perfect is Jesus. And I know that you and I say, well, ah, but Pastor, to, to, to be better, uh, it's easy part because I have self improvement. But with self improvement, you get to till the, till one level, you have a limit. The only who can take to a certain place. But the real transformation of the blood of Jesus on your life could, could make you a new creation. Through re regret, through the mighty blood of Jesus, makes an everlasting change. But with self-improvement, you still you have the desire of sin. Pastor, well, I, I go to the, I'm driving and I see over there the manual place. It's not saying manual. It's manual only. I did to 10. I, and I have the desire to, to, to make a try. You lost a fortune gambling. And you still have the desire when you go to that market and you need to buy that. But if I buy, if I win, Lord, if I win, I will give all the money to the church. Liar. You are not giving it right now. I'm, God is saying, I'm not trusting you. You have the desire with gambling. You have the desire with the pornography. You have the desire with alcohol. You have many things. So the self-improvement to try to be better, it will not work. Till, it will work, go to a certain limit. We need the transformation of Jesus. And when that transformation comes, you will see the temptation and it will not bother you. They will start to offend you and they will criticize and they will say wrong words to you. But because you are dead in Christ, doesn't matter. It doesn't affect me. Try to offend a dead body. Slap him. No, no, don't do that. On the... Well, pastor told me to try it. You know, he will not. Because when we are dead on Christ, when we take the cross and start to believe on the Lord there's a real transformation and our path and we were going to the wrong direction change to share someone else about what the Lord has done in my life hey he's risen hey the Lord the Lord has done miracles on my life hey there's something so strong these disciples were spiritual, listless, apathicos. They knew about Jesus. They themselves had preached the gospel. I'm, I'm sure about that. You know, in the circle of disciples, there were the 12, the apostles, the circle of the 70 disciples, and there were the group of the 500 or of the rest. And I'm not going to go right here on, on that, but just 
write them this number, John 19, 20, 25. It says that the wife of Cleophas, one of the guys that were going away from Jerusalem, the wife, it was with Mary, the mother of Jesus. It was with the other Mary of Magdalene. And she herself, they called Mary too. So there was a triple Mary. It was very popular, the name Mary. So Cleophas should be someone close. He knew about it. But they were moving away from Jerusalem. They turned to the routine of life. And God knows us very well. Sometimes we say, we say well, I'm going to fool God. You can't. I, I will pretend. I will, will, I will dry, even that, I will take a shower today to come to church. I, I will shave myself. I, I will put a good cologne. But you know what? What the Lord sees on you is not your suit or perfume. He will see inside. Revelation chapter 2, verse 1. To the angel of the church in Ephesus, write. These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. I'm talking about Jesus over there. And he says, I know your deeds. Revelation chapter 2, verse 1. I know what you do and what you don't. I know if you work hard or not. I know your perseverance, and I know that you cannot tolerate wicked men, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles, but they're not, and have found them false. You have persevered, and you have endured hardship for my name, and I have not grown weary. Verse 4, yet I hold this against you, for you have forsaken your first love. Verse 5, very important, once again. Remember the hate from which you have fallen. Repent. It's not just, well, I'm sorry, God. No, it needs to be forgive me, Lord. And especially this part. And do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from your place. The verse that impacts me right here is that he knows what I do and what I don't do for him. It's, I'm not talking about right now. It's not talking about the prayers that you do. That is very important, and that's on the other chapter. But I'm, he's saying... He knows when you work for the Lord. When you start to say, I'm willing to do whatever it takes for the cause of Jesus. Surely he knows our prayers. But here, he remembers our work. What you and I have done. And when he talks about works... He remembers how you preached, how you used to preach, but you are not anymore. How many souls you win for Jesus Christ. How many of them you have helped them to send to the missionary field. When, when the Lord talks about our works, He's talking about the amount of offering that we dedicated to the kingdom. Not to the church, to the kingdom of God. Works means the, how many people did we be seed? How many orphans, prisoners? Our works are known by God. I bless my brothers who, who work so hard on the food ministry. Wow. Bless the, bless the name of the Lord Jesus. They work hard. They wake up early. They pick up tons of food. And he is watching that. 
The problem, when I go to the other direction, contrary to the direction of faith, these disciples went to a skepticism, to doubt. We cannot fool God. That's why I'm not interested to extortion you because there's no blessing on that. But to inform you and to get enthusiastic and let the Word of God start to burn in our hearts. He knows when you cooperate with a nursery on the children. He knows. And He knows when you're walking to the opposite way. In order for us to make a change, it starts with me. We like to talk about them. It's me. Just point your fingers at Daniel. You need to change. There, there, there's, watch out the road that you're walking. Watch out the path that you're taking. Make sure that you are not getting away from Jerusalem. Make sure that you are not getting away and you are getting cold. And today your heart is burning. Let's turn around and let's serve God with all our hearts. When you have a determination. Let's go back and do the works. It's nice to talk. It's nice to have opinions. It's nice, it's nice to dream. But this church is the church that do. Let's win the church. The, the, let's win the city for Jesus Christ. Let's preach the gospel. From here, go and take some flyers and start to talk about the name of Jesus. Share your testimony with others. The perseverance, the dedication, the commitment. Let's do it. I remember when I was a little kid and I put, I post a, a, a little image that my cousin gave me from, from Argentina when I, 1966. First time that I came, 67, 66. First time that I came to the United States. I mean, a little, little car over there. In the United States. Who will know that I will be driving here? And when I was a little kid, I used to play with a yo-yo. I don't know if that's the name. That's how you call it? Yo-yo? Going down, up. You do some things around. Up and down. You play like that? I used to play a lot. But sometimes we are spiritual yo-yos. One day we are up, faster, yes, I'm dedicated. I will serve God, I will do it. Next week, I'm in the valley of dead. <laughs> I call them, text them, what's going on? No answer. It's like they try to do the silent treatment to the pastor. It doesn't work that way. Because... The Lord is knocking, and if I cannot approach to you, He can do, He can approach to you. If the Word of God is moving in you today, you need to decide, stop sinning. That's our problem, our heart. You're tired of asking forgiveness, doing the same thing. That's because you're going to the wrong direction. How many times I see on the freeway people going on the wrong direction. Not only they, they kill themselves, but they kill someone else. Close your eyes. We cannot return to drugs, to shameful passions. 
We cannot go back to promiscuity. We cannot use manipulation to someone because the Bible considers that a Jezebelic witchcraft. Today my course is changed. Today my course is different. And I'm approaching to the sacred. I will approach into the temple. I will approach to the works. Because the language of revival is repentance. There's nothing bad with that because without work, we cannot make it to heaven. Repentance is the humility to recognize that we need Jesus. Let's not go to Emmaus. Let's change our directions. Let's have an encounter with the Lord. And ask the Lord to open your spiritual eyes. I know that the Lord is doing that right now. The spiritual reality is greater than the earthly reality. By the way, there's no magic verse. But if there's a transformation... It will, it will be things that will happen on your life. Ask the Lord right now, Lord, I made a decision today to change my course. I, 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 gonna, I promise you that I'm going to come back, Lord. I, I'm not going to get more call right now. I'm going to start to work for you again. And I'm going to commit to the cause of Jesus. Jesus tells you, deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow Jesus. Until the last consequences. Because of my words speak. On Luke chapter 24, verse 32, they asked each other, were not our hearts burning with us? While well, he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures. Burning hearts in Fontana. <laughs> Burning hearts of transformation. I, wanted, I would like to remind you that fire will soften the gold. It will melt the gold. And even it will melt the iron. Just raise your hand to the Lord and say, Lord, I need a change. I need a change. I need a change. I need a fire. I need a fire once again. I need the fire of my life. I need the Holy Spirit, Lord, right now. I need to approach once again to the throne of grace and ask forgiveness and repent myself. Hallelujah. Let's stand together right now and let's worship the Lord. If you would like to approach to the altar and pray, we gladly will do, we will pray for you. And let's commit ourselves to the Lord. Sometimes we come to the altar only for, for the blessing, for the miracle. Now come to the altar for the change. I need to change. And the, don't try to, ah, well, I'm in birth. No, 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 there's no inversion of nothing. I need change. It's your time. Let's come. Let's make a decision. Let's approach to the Lord. I'm sure the Lord will do a miracle on your life. Show us your glory. Show us your glory. Show us your glory. Show up. 
the spirit of the Lord is moving right now. Thank you, Lord, for the decisions of your people. Thank you, Lord, for the fire on each heart. Thank you, Lord, because you opened their eyes. <laughs> and thank you, Lord, because I see results at hand. Words. Words, great words. I bless each family represented right here. In the precious name of the Lord, Jesus Christ, amen, amen. Be blessed.